Deixa-me cá ver. Quem é julga está a gravar, não é? Ter-vos a chegar uma mensagem, não é? So, uh, we think that there already been a recording this session. Uh, so, all of you agree uh, that this session could be uh, recorded for uh, future follow-up uh, by yourself after the classes. Um, so, well, the floor uh, is yours, Pedro. Thank you. Okay, obrigado. Thank you. So, I'll share my screen. Uh, Bruno, vou te pedir permissão para partilhar aqui deste lado. Claro, claro, claro. Sim, tens razão. Ah, o Bruno, só avisar o pessoal do UX que depois da aula vamos uhum. fazer um jump ao Teams. É isso mesmo, é isso mesmo. Portanto, vocês desculpem, é, aqui o, o professor Rodrigo Assaf, vai ser a primeira aula que vocês vão ter com ele. Nós aproveitamos, desculpa Pedro, só aqui um interregno, um, um parênteses. Uh, por volta das 7h20, 7h30, faremos aí um outro intervalo para depois, de facto, como isto já se insere no modo, ao contrário de outros participantes que até podem vir de outra pós-graduação, como já referi, das Antecologias para a Saúde, uh, o, o objetivo é que uh, depois possam falar um bocadinho com o, o professor Rodrigo Assaf, eventualmente no Teams, não é? já no Isso. canal que temos lá. Uh, ainda estou aqui a abrir portas, como digo. Uh, e... E para se falar um bocadinho do módulo em si, não é? Objetivos, a própria, enfim, metodologia, métodos de avaliação e afim, é. questões mais específicas relacionadas com o módulo, ainda que, repito, esta workshop já esteja... Olá Pedro, boa tarde. Este módulo já esteja inserido na, portanto, no módulo 6 da pós-graduação em design de interação e jogos. Pronto, todos os restantes são convidados. São cerca de 15, 15 participantes aqui nesse, nesse contexto. Os exercícios que vamos fazer aqui e que estão programados, estão planeados, nada tem a ver, também fica aqui o disclosure, não tem, nada tem a ver uh, com os vossos projetos, portanto, da pós-graduação, que neste momento vocês estão a desenvolver, ok? Vamos ganhar competências técnicas em P5JS e depois, eventualmente, vocês poderão aplicá-las de facto e se calhar já a seguir... Na, na, na próxima semana um, na, na implementação do vosso projeto, ok? Porque de facto este modo com o professor Rodrigo Assaf embora se chame modo de prototipagem e implementação, como aliás já falamos nas aulas, ele é exclusivamente dedicado há uns tempos para cá à implementação, no fundo. Vocês neste momento têm um protótipo, portanto é à implementação ok? Bem, posto isto Pedro, não percamos mais tempo Ok, então Vou partilhar o meu ecrã se o meu computador deixar. Só um segundo, ok. Deixem-me só voltar a pôr-vos aqui grandes para vos ver, que eu não vos consigo ver. Okay. Já devem estar a receber desse lado Sim. a imagem. Vou fazer só aqui uma breve apresentação rápida, como o professor Bruno está a mencionar. O objetivo desta, desta apresentação não é dar uma competência específica em JavaScript, mas dar competências que vocês podem levar para outras linguagens. Então, the idea of learning... Uh, something with uh, processing, uh, JS, the JavaScript library, is to bring these competencies onto other um, uh, activities. So today we'll do an introduction. Maybe I'll skip the introduction because it's already kind of late. But the idea is to present ourselves. Uh, maybe you can do, drop a line in the chat so I know your kind of skills. Do you have previous code skills? Where do you come from? Uh, we'd, we'd love to know more about you. And we'll, we'll introduce in this first session the, the basic how to operate and to draw with processing JS library. And then in the next session, we'll inter sorry, in the next session, hmm, the next session, we'll introduce the, the how to bring data in, uh, into processing and, and uh, build a, a basic visualization. And on the third session, uh, Rodrigo will bring an additional library and animate it. Portanto, vamos fazer isto de forma gradual, construir fundamentos, visualização, de, mais visualizada com dados reais, e depois uma, uma interação e animação. Uh, bom, isto é mais ou menos o que está programado. This is basically what we'll do. Not, uh, at least the first part. Not, um, not so much <laughs> a visual or interesting thing, but we'll, you can see it already on the link you, you, some of you received. Não sei se terão todos recebido o link do, do, 
da pasta dos sketches, eu vou mandar um link com a pasta mais organizada entre hoje e amanhã, uh, já comecei a organizar a pasta, uh, mas é basicamente isto, isto é interativo, dá para mexer o range scale, uh, portanto é uma visualização interativa para aqueles que ainda não tiveram percebido. So for those who, who are not sure what they've come to see, it's basically this, we're creating graphs with code, with real code, real, real data, it's, estes dados são dados reais da, da, do Eurobarómetro. So real data from European uh, unit, uh, European uh, Union. Um, this is the link. Maybe I can copy. Oops, sorry. Maybe I can copy this over. Uh, I can leave the link later. Okay, you, you've probably received the link. I can copy this onto the chats. Just a second. Uh, this is the code repository. You you are already able to see more things over there. Okay. Um, and let's maybe I can do this like this. Maybe it's faster to do it like this. Um, so a bit about myself. Uh, I'm a professor. I'm a colleague of, of Bruno in uh, Faculty of Fine Arts uh, on the I2ADS research units. There are two research units. The I2ADS in Bruno is from the ID+. Plus. We collaborate between units. Um, and my main interests are human computer interaction and, and typography. And I, I revived this one. I already showed this one. I maintained this example. This was probably one of the first examples I did publicly with, with code. I've been coding since probably 2004. I'm not a programmer. Uh, okay, preciso clarificar. So, format designer, I'm trained as a graphic designer. I'm not a uh, an engineer or a programmer. So, sorry about the errors I'm about to make. <laughs> um, And uh, I did this with my wife. I did a system where things could be um, a, a skeleton system where she could put import her illustrations. And the system was something like this. You can see here the system being manipulated on the Interact website. This was done with the Java applets back in the day, not with processing JS, but today is much easier to do this. So you can see the manipulation going on. This, this, this is a, a bit just about me. And I brought here. Rodrigo, uh, this is a picture I took from the internet uh, we took in the previous Processing Community Day where he taught a workshop. Sorry, Rodrigo, if he's watching this, uh, uh, but I didn't have a picture of him, so we'll be meeting him later. Um, and uh, Rodrigo is also trained as a, as a graphic designer, new media artist. He does coding like the grown-ups do, okay? He does coding a serio, mais do que eu. Eu bastante vou só fazer as bases. Já vimos aqui, aqui tinha uma secção dedicada a cada um de vocês. Um, I had something organized here if we had to, more time to, to spend, but, but maybe we'll, maybe we can drop it in the chat. So we have Antonio Coelho um, aqui, Mary A from Toronto, basic coding and P5, beginner coder. Okay, Mary, okay, we'll do it from the ground up. Um, Fernando, está a ser o Bruno, está a dizer olá, Fernando. Um, mix artist, okay, perfect. Um, Fernando from Lisbon, beginner coder, perfeito. Played a little with P5.js, ok. Desculpa, Fernando, se fizer as neiras, mas vou fazer à minha maneira, ok. Depois eu, também eu vou tentar assistir à última sessão, uh, porque quero aprender coisas também com o Rodrigo. Portanto, cada um de nós faz as coisas um bocadinho como, como faz. So, everyone has it, their own um, code. So, maybe if it would be nice if you can drop a line, just where from your basic experience, your basic interests, so we can move on. I can move on with the presentation to save some time. I always do a bit of, of um, makes this, this marketing, a bit of marketing. So for this is for those who are not from Portugal. This is Porto, Portugal. This is a really cool city. And our school is basically, the, the picture is taken from more or less over here. So our school is downtown center. And we have some relationships with the University of Aveiro, mainly in the PhD and with IPCA up, up there in the north. Um, in Barcelos, um, ah, maybe I should hide my comments. Okay, uh, my, up there in Barcelos, um, and some relationships with the uh, Esmai, the School of Arts. Um, so this is, these are basically our, our relationship, research, and development uh, partnerships, and of course, with the the, the postgraduate students, the specializations in studies, sorry, the specialization courses, programs, and um, and of course with FIOP, uh, the technology school, the engineering school. So this is our ecosystem. Uh, just to go briefly for this, this is um, the, fr the front the front of our school. It's a palace, an old palace. We have a huge 
grounds mainly covered with a romantic garden if you want to visit us this is our research units um well sorry uh, the research units this has a purpose Desculpa, Bruno. No, I, I should have posted the picture of id plus but this is mainly to to say our this research unit has been promoting this main activity this is just to do some marketing of the conference we're, we're organizing so this workshop is embedded in the the program of the conference uh, processing Community Day, uh, international activity. We had uh, João Martin Moura, we had Penosal Machado, we had Carson Schmidt in the past. And this edition this year, if you can join us on the 14th of February, no dia 14 de fevereiro, vamos ter a Ana Carreiras em pessoa na sala. E isso tudo bem a fazer stream também online. So we'll have these um, guests um, this year. Uh, and of course, Let's let's dive into this very quickly. Just a brief explanation. I told everyone I would do this code first, but I, I lied. Uh, so why should we program or do visualizations as graphic designers? Okay, maybe we, I shouldn't say this myself. I always uh, push the examples. If you if you look at um, Nicholas Felton, uh, a graphic designer, you can you can maybe I can take this out and put this example here. Uh, why did this go? Okay, Nicholas Felton. This is my first reference to explain why designers should code. Nicholas Felton started doing these uh, online reports on on um, habits. Um, he did so. He, he took data from the New York. Um, uh, it's not the thing I have in the comments. I changed the example. Sorry. He took some data from the from the New York City's um, uh, bicycle data uh, or cab data. I don't remember exactly. And this is GPS, real time GPS that is stored, and then he visualized it. So this allows us to visualize um, uh, patterns, moving moving movement patterns. Sorry, this is. His personal data, sorry, his personal data on movements uh, in bicycle uh, in New York. He does this very cool um, personal reports thing, um, uh, where he where he declares where it's what is what he has done during the year. So you, you might want to check this out. Of course, you're you're probably thinking, oh, I could do this in Illustrator. Okay, you could do this in Illustrator. So when you're able to do this in Illustrator and you're happy with it, then I dare you to do what Aaron Coblin does. This is a very old, not processing JS example, but I'll put the link over here. And maybe you can do this. Aaron Coblin pasted, um, uh, pasted, sorry. Aaron Coblin did a visualization of the flights in New York. And you can actually see several visualizations done in the last two years of the flight patterns around the globe because the, the closing of Ukraine's airspace and Russia's airspace. Um, and you can actually see uh, Aaron Coblin um, if my video works today, today, hello, I cannot do, ah, okay, play, okay. Uh, Aaron Cobling did a video where he picked up the data from the FAA, from the Aeronautics Space, uh, Aeronautics Aviation, Entidade uh, que gera os voos aeronáuticos dos Estados Unidos, agora não sei dizer, a FAA, e visualizou os voos. So he mapped the incoming and outgoing flights and domestic flights uh, inside the US airspace. The video is kind of clunky. The frame rate is very low right now, but you can check this out in uh, on the website. So if if it hasn't if it hasn't been clear up until now why you should learn how to code to do this is well try to do this in After Effects and see how much time it takes you. So probably it takes you as much time as it takes to learn how to program this, and then you can actually do this every day. So the reason why you should learn how to program is that you can do more do more complex stuff do more volume of work okay and why are, are we using uh, processing um, or the processing js ecosystem well processing is a language uh, it's part of a big of a bigger community um, called the processing foundation um this one shouldn't be new to you all uh, the processing foundation was consolidated in, a, in an ecosystem that encompasses Java, the main processing application, the P5.js, the JavaScript uh, library we'll be using today, the Android library that you can compile and program to the to the mobile phone, um, and the Python mode. Um, 
that you can it's another it's another ecosystem to to program also you can use uh, wiring uh, it's a a kind of a cousin of processing uh, to program to physical computational devices. So what these share in common is the simplified nature of the language. And if you learn the concepts, you'll be able to move to other languages. So processing started with John Maeda uh, a long time ago, um, and his students developed the, the processing application. I, just a print screen for you to realize, it's still the old, <laughs> it's still the old screen. So this has its roots back in the 70s, with logo, with Simmer Papert, and then John May, the design by numbers, and then his students designed processing. And processing gave birth to P5JS. So the, the simplified, so processing was made to teach artists how to code and to teach coders how to do arts. So this is a very simplified language to do both. And it's a very capable language. Of course, I, uh, I'm, I'm very suspicious, uh, biased on saying this. Um, but this allowed to simplify doing graphics, pixel-based graphics with P5JS. And that's what we'll be using today. And why do I recommend this? Because when you learn this kind of ecosystem, you kind of work from your mobile to your desktop to the web, and then you can move on, for example, to InDesign. There's a simplified language library called Bazel that's basically processing on InDesign. And you can use other stuff like Drawbots. It's not processing, but it's very similar to do Python thing. So there's a, a whole ecosystem where you can jump to um, if when you learn these kind of concepts. So this is why I, lo I love this. And how to learn this? OK, today we'll be doing a kickstart. But yeah, you, you, you just go to p5js.org, and we'll be going there in a minute. And you start going from there. There's an editor. You can click here on the editor. And there's a reference. And there's a get started. And of course, there's very there's two cool books that you should have we have it in FBALP. So if you have the opportunity to go to the fine arts faculty library, you can uh, actually read this book. It's over there. Um, and yeah, well, but you can learn everything from the web, uh, mainly and especially from uh, from the guru, from uh, uh, Schiffman. Maybe I can post this one. Uh, Schiffman, uh, Daniel Schiffman is a teacher in uh, New York, New York University. This is so slow today, sorry. Uh, let me just copy this. This is the coding train, his channel on on, on YouTube, where you can learn everything. So this is basically it. And um, what, we'll, what we'll be doing, uh, what you'll learn today, well, at least in the first two sessions, uh, three sessions, sorry, uh, you'll be able to do this kind of stuff. So if you're still not sure why, you why you're, you're here and why you should learn this, maybe I can show you this example. Uh, well, I have the video going on. I'll, I'll, I'll leave the link, but I have the video here. This is an example. Just search for p5.js visualization, and you see lots of examples online. Okay, this is an example from open processing. From uh, this is me just saving the screen. Um, sorry, taking out the, the ads. Drag and drop. And you drop an MP3 on this sketch, it. and what it allows it uh, to do YouTube. is to do the to and see the visualization, for example, of an MP3 playing. You see a visualization. So you just drop the MP3 and the, it starts auto playing. Again, it's kind of slow, but this would allow you to do graphics, for example, for motion, motion design, motion graphics. So it's kind of slow. Well, I'll just leave you the link. Just leave you the link and you can see it for yourself. Just leave you the where I found it. It's better. So this is the example. I found uh, when preparing the slides that maybe would uh, encourage you. So we've seen examples from data visualization, some personal data visualization, from organizations data visualization, from music visualization for, for graphics. And let's just quit PowerPoint and go for it. Um, so we'll just go for it. So what if my computer response today. Just go to p5js.org. I'll just paste the link here. If my computer allows me to do, okay. Just go to p5.js and you can actually start. Don't 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 uh, worry. Um não se assustem. Se eu tiver rápido demais ou se o meu inglês não tiver a ser bom, por favor, dê-me um toque. 
Está tudo ok desse lado? Ok, umas cabeças a abanar, ok. Muito é, bem. Está tudo ótimo, Pedro. Ok, so let's move on. So, so just go to p5.js. This is a full website where you can do everything. I highly recommend you that you take, take a read to know the history and stuff like this and see the reference. We'll be using the reference uh, on purpose or, or not. <laughs> But what I want you to, to pay attention is the editor. Just click on the editor link. I am already logged on um, here. So let me make the, the, the text bigger for you to see. I'm already logged on. I encourage you to create an account. It's not mandatory, but what it allows you is to uh, save your sketches. So whatever you do, uh, this allows you to, to, um, to save your code instead of having to download it to your computer whenever you want to save it, okay? So this allows you to have, it's free, completely free. I haven't hit the, the limits uh, until now, but you can use it uh, as you wish. So this editor, Uh, it's very simple. It's done on purpose, uh, the simplicity. So, <laughs> nós podemos discutir isto, mas we, we, could, we could argue that this could be better. They made this editor very basic on purpose. This is one of the principles of uh, Papert and Maeda, to do, to do the code editing really by text and with the minimum amount of aids possible for people to learn, okay? So this is a learning environment. Uh, although it's also a production environment, uh, full-fledged production environment. So what you see here is, well, the file, save, open, examples, stuff like this. This one is pretty cool. This will allow you to, to, to put the code clean, to clean up the code. Uh, find and replace, very simple. I use the keyboard to do this. Um, and we'll do this uh, in a different, these options, we'll do this here run this is the play so whenever you want to do something you have you hit play whenever you want to stop it to animating you press stop sometimes you might want to leave this auto refresh open there will be one command that produces weird results it's a common print I'll, i'll i'll show it and the help when you press the reference it will open up the reference page which, which is also nice where you can search for the things you're doing i'll leave it open and Take zoom out of the way. Okay. So um, what we're seeing here is basically the code on the left what, and the result on the right. So when you press play, yeah, not very interesting. A gray box appears. But you have, if you haven't programmed ever in your life, so welcome. <laughs> This is easy. Just pressing play. Okay. Um, so let's do our first line of code. Uh, just, just Bear with me for a second. On the, on, I'm typing here between the function setup. I'll explain this in a second. Just type print uh, hello world. This is for the people who have never programmed. This is the classical first program everyone does. So you should type print hello world and press play. And usually when we're doing this in person, I always ask, mm -hmm. What did it do? Did it do anything? Is it producing anything, any, any error? What are you seeing? Um, esta é a parte menos interativa de fazer os workshops online. This is the least interesting and interactive way of doing workshops online. So usually when we do this in person, I have you talking back. You can open the mics if you want or open the video and do help, please. You should, sometimes I do signs. Sometimes I do this. Let me see if I have some, some here. Like, Ah, time's up. <laughs> okay, ninguém está com coragem. André, estavas aí a ligar o mic? No, you uh, are giving instructions, Pedro, to, to, to the computer. So exactly. programming is giving instructions. So. Exactly, exactly. Yes. Okay, o André não está com coragem de falar? Não, 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 não tem problema. Aparece realmente a linha de código. Responder okay, um pouco, porque código. aparece no, nos comentários, tipo na consola. Aqui, na consola, ok. So for those who have never programmed, welcome. You have your, you can consider yourself a programmer now because you did your first program. What happened is programming is like Bruno was saying, a set of instructions, okay? And these instructions for the computer to follow have certain rules. Some instructions, the computer already knows. Some instructions like this word print, the computer, the processing library, the processing JS library has been created to teach the computer what to do when it finds prints. So when the computer finds prints, 
what it does, it outputs a message here into the console. This console area is the area where the computer interacts with the programmer. So we can ask the computer to give us, to say what it's doing. We can ask for something back. And so this is an instruction. It's called, uh, é um, é um, é uma instrução? É um, é um, desculpem, é uma... Ah, agora estamos falhando uma palavra. Função? É uma função, sim, é uma função, desculpa. <laughs> Uh, so this is a function, a special function the computer already knows, and what it, the computer says, okay, I will do something with this because I know what to do. I'm expecting you to give me something. So what you give the computer, let's look at this parenthesis like it's a box or a hug, like it's the arms of a person. Like let me put it like this: the hugs. I will carry in my arms, print, and I will carry in my arms, print this. So I will give you this i'll give the computer this okay so the parameters are given between the parentheses and this special parameter th this special uh, uh, data i'm giving the computer uh, is called a string it's called a text okay Th this is why it's put between uh between the single commas okay uh, you can actually use the single comma or you can use the double comma but if you use the double comma you have to write double comma on the beginning and double comma on the end for it to understand, okay? So whatever you open in the computer, you have to close it in the end. Um, and finally, uh, isto agora vai causar aqui alguns conflitos com os programadores, com os mais puristas, you should always end your instruction. So this whole line is a computer instruction. It's uh, built with a function, with a method or a function. It's built with a, a special kind of box of parameters. You may you might give it parameters, or you might just do the without parameters, and then you should end the instruction. Okay, in JavaScript, you're not obliged to do this. The program still works. Uh, I would encourage you to do it always as um, as an academic exercise. Okay, uh, it's, I think it's better. I still think it's better. Maybe someday I'll think it's not that okay. Today, I think it's better. So this is what an instruction is, right? Uh, alguma dúvida até agora? So any doubts until now uh, what this does? Uma instrução, portanto, parece simples. Gente, é assim tão simples. A diferença daqui até ao fim é saber que instruções usar. Ok? É só isto. E vamos fazer as básicas. So we'll do the basics. The difference between now, you're a programmer, and the end session is knowing, knowing your syntax, knowing your code. So like any language, you have to learn the code. So First thing to learn, and I'm sorry about this, usually processing the Java environment is easier to start. Here, you're dependent on these two things. You're looking at something that says function setup, and you have these special curly brackets. Uh, se alguém não sabe como é que se faz os, os brackets, o toborg bracket ou parentes, uh, parentes circunflexo, uh, o colchete em português, não é? No Macintosh é Option Shift 8 e Option Shift 9. No, Mac, no PC é Alt, o Alt lá direito, o Alt GR. Uh, se não estou em erro, Alt 7 e Alt 0. Por aí. Deve estar no teclado. Uh, portanto, temos este tipo de função. So, we have this special thing called functions. For the, for the sake of, uh, of simplification, let's just call this, it's a group. Whenever we want to do print hello world, and then a second a second thing, let's keep using prints because we still haven't learned anything. My name is Pedro, for example. So whenever you want to run more than one instruction in the same action, you create a group. Probably most of you are graphic designers, so you relate to this. When, when you want to move something in Photoshop or in Illustrator, you create a, a layer group or a, a group in Illustrator or in InDesign. We're just creating a group of things to move everything at the same time. Okay? So, isto define uma espécie de uma função. For the sake of it, it's easier to understand like this. When you want to do one, two, three, four, five things at, at the same time, or sequentially, but it's better explained like this, we create a function. So, a function is something that is started by the word function and then a special name, followed by parentheses, and everything it should do is between um, two more brackets, okay? 
these two functions are automatic functions, as you might have seen. Everything that's automatic in the computer has a blue color. So the computer already knows what it is. It's called setup. Setup just says, I'm going to prepare the size. For example, I changed create canvas to 800, and you can see automatically it's already building a huge screen for me. So the setup builds the screen, prepares the program. And then the draw, let's do something fun here in the draw. Just follow me. Ellipse. And let's just say, I don't know, four times 10. Okay. The setup runs once. So the computer prepares the screen, prepares, um, uh, prepares the canvas elements. I, I, I cannot go, I cannot explain everything, but let's, let's just say it prepares an element on the page, like an image, and it puts it on the page. And then the draw is constantly updating this drawing. So right now it's not very fun because it's not doing it, something, uh, anything. But if you've, if you've done uh, the command ellipse, by now, you must have guessed the ellipse draws a ball, right? Let's just do something fun and change this first 10 to mouse X and the second 10 to mouse Y. So when you do this, you can actually see, oh, it's very simple to have a ball following the mouse. Okay. Yeah, everyone got it? So getting a ball to follow the mouse is as simple as doing ellipse, mouse X, mouse Y, 10, 10. So let me stop because it's very slow. Uh, and let me try to explain what, what's happening here. So what this command does, this first one prepares the screen, like we said, and creates a, a, a square in the screen. And it, it runs once and it stops. And the second one, you see function, we want to do a group of things and we call it draw, it's automatic. So the program already is expecting the settings, setup and draw. So the, these are the three functions processing JS has built in. Um, so it automatically runs the setup when the page is opened and then automatically runs the draw whenever it can, always. It's always trying to run. It, it needs to always run usually at 60 frames per second or it, or less or more if we, if we try to. Um, it needs to do this because whenever we move the mouse, it has to redraw, it draws the, the ball here and then it has to move the ball and redraw it there and move the ball, redraw it there. And so this section group, this section, uh, sorry, this uh, additional section, this second function is always drawing ellipse. And let me, try to explain this to you. The numbers we punch in here are parameters. So whenever you draw ellipse, we, we're telling the program, please give me a ball or an ellipse. The first two um, numbers are called the coordinate system. So processing uses the zero, zero from the top corner. So the zero horizontal, we're graphic designers, always horizontal and vertical. Como é que se diz isto? Sempre coordenadas horizontais, sempre coordenadas e depois verticais. Um, always first the horizontal, the X, and then the vertical. And notice this is a zero, zero, so positive is going downwards. We'll change this in uh, roughly, I don't know, in roughly an hour or so. We'll change the coordinate system in a few minutes. But processing is using to the right, positive X, down, positive y. So if we want to go with the ball to the right, we should punch here a bigger number and the ball goes to the right and punch here a bigger number like 250 and it's still going to the right over here. Okay. Yeah. If we want to go down, we just punch a bigger number over here and it, it just goes down over here. Okay. So it's growing in this direction. So the first two numbers are what's the position of the ball, the X and the Y. And you might have guessed the, the second set of numbers are the dimensions of the ball, the width, 
because it's an ellipse and the height if you want if you want a ball yeah width and height produce a circle uh, equal width and height okay so you right now you must be asking okay but how do i know how processing js does graphics well this is the part where you have to study sorry about that go to reference and let me help you start starting to read the reference so when you go to p5.js click on reference or just click here help i don't know how to do graphic things reference and it opens this page and you can start well i always do it like this i, can, I always do find in the browser so it finds something over here so i'll go ellipse and it tells me where the ellipse is but if you don't know what you're searching for you should start by looking at the topics so we should go okay typography we want to do this today not right now image yeah circles and balls are images but here is bitmap images so not write this i always uh, devices connected to the computer data maybe we'll use this i don't know if we're going to use this today but on wednesday we'll be using this we want um, graphics we want graphics we want that environment oh i score agora não consigo encontrar that environment foundation math henry shape oh sorry sorry shapes <laughs> i wasn't finding them uh, so maybe you want something like this shapes so when we go to shapes you can see 2d primitives uh, ah come on arc ellipse circle line point quad hex okay perfect this is perfect because you can actually look at this and you can see that it has 3d primitives also we'll not be using this today uh and you can see okay maybe i want for example a hex let me see what the hex does you click on it and you just yeah the fun with these kind of languages these simplified languages in the beginning is is very exploratory you don't actually need to to read a lot I'm, I'm the guy who usually reads the manual before using but don't do this because it's a waste of time just play with it until you feel comfortable and then well then you have to read something but just okay just look at the example it always has one example on the left and it has something here i'll explain in a minute and it has something over here just i don't know why don't we just copy something like this copy and go back to our code just paste it over here and see what it does okay and now let's play with the numbers. If you're not comfortable with this, just punch a zero. Oh, it moves right. Punch another zero. Okay, it moves down. Uh, okay. And this one, okay, maybe I think I saw this one coming. 155, maybe I should move it to the left a bit, okay. Okay. Uh, 105. So this, okay, always the same. X, Y, so the position and the width and the height, but this one has a fifth parameter. Okay, what does this fifth parameter does? Let's check it out. So this fifth parameter, as it seems, it's the corner radius. So this is the time where reading is cool or just copy paste the examples and have fun with them, okay? Just explore. In the beginning is very interesting. So I would encourage you from this session on to play with graphical primitives. We'll be using a couple of them, uh, but there's a lot more to explore uh, so yeah just have fun going through the reference and trying each one of these uh, the arc will be particularly challenging to 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 do um so this is the first start okay it's still not very interesting my program uh because it's only drawing in black and white um so let's let's continue to look at at the, our structure so maybe i can take this out um, i can take one line out now it's a cool time to talk about comments because we'll, our program will start to grow and we'll start to lose track of the things we do sometimes we want to leave some notes some texts like like we'll do post-its or notes on our notebooks uh, in the program for example to say if we forget how to do print and we want to remember later we add a comment. A comment is a line of text or a line of information that is ignored by the computer. So it's only for the humans in the equation, okay? It can be a note to yourself. It can be a link. It can be a full book if you want to. So I'll just say this comment is a basic uh, debug. <laughs> uh, how to say this? This comment outputs 
the string to the, sorry, also, uh, for example, I might want to say what this following next line of code does. If you might want to say it to yourself. So if I were to say it here, I would say, um, these are basic 2D shapes. Uh, remember always, always to do it like X, Y, width and height. So you might X position. You might want to do this. Don't worry. It it's uh, you don't pay more to use <laughs> comments. Okay, it's always better to have comments in your code and better organized code, and then to have it very shortened. If you want to shorten it, there are tools, special specialty tools to do uh, minified code. You can just run them in the just search for minified JS, and you can minify your your JS code and optimize it to save space. But while you're designing and learning. Always try to do this. So Y position in space. And this is the width. This is pretty basic. And this is the height. Always like this. And this one, we could say the fifth property or parameter, para parameter, parameter is the corner radius. I sometimes I always I also use this to say, okay, hex. I where it where is it? I'll just say, I'll just copy this and I'll say. I found it here. I, I use a lot of Stack Overflow in my things. So usually I just leave the link over there. So I remember where I found it and where I can see it later. Okay. So this is a comment and this allows you to remember what you did. So I would start by doing this. This creates a bitmap canvas elements on the DOM. We'll go through this later of the HTML page. Okay, so I'll just do this um, uh, on our code and I will save it on the on the on the collection. So when you save your, your code, the computer just stops uh, rendering and you have an auto auto named uh, sketch name. It's called experience cheater. It's really cool. I really like the names it it produces. So let's just say this is the information visualization P5 uh, 01 basics. Okay. And you can save it like this and I'll save it in the collection so you can see it here. So if you go to the links uh, I gave you, sorry, this one. Uh, the last one, I will try to organize this later. I don't know how, maybe it's with names. Um, you can see this already here. Uh, you can access my code. So if I give you this link, copy, you can actually see the code I'm doing. So if, if you have any issues, um, I'll just save it and you can use this. I'll, I'll continue to work on this file. And you can just use this file um, as you go along, okay? Tudo ok, this love? Ainda fazemos aqui uh, uns minutinhos, 5 às 6, 6 às 7. Fazemos um intervalo para ir às 7 e um quarto, pode ser, Bruno? A mim parece bem, Pedro. Sim, okay. sim. Uh, pronto, então temos aqui coberto. So we have basically covered the... Sorry. Uh, we have basically covered the setup, prepare the, 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 the HTML page, because this is a JavaScript HTML canvas element running on an HTML page, and the draw. And the draw does the drawings we want to do. So if we do something with a dynamic property like the mouse X, and you press play, it's always moving. You can actually almost see a pong pad going on. So if the ball would fall now, we could do like a the pong game going on. Uh, and if we do here a mouse Y dynamic property, so this pink word is reference to uh, what is called a property. So this the processing already knows what it is. It's always listening. It's always seeing where the mouse is and updating 
on the draw. So whenever it draws a new canvas, so it's drawing canvas, it's updating. So we can actually say, twink, woo, and you could do it like this. Like, well, I actually can do this. Like, not, not what we're going to do today, but kind of fun to do this. So we, we could do like a pong. Okay, not very fun. So you, you can see it right now. Something is weird over here. Although we're drawing this, the, the square and the circle in the same mouse X and mouse Y, you can see that the, the circle is drawn from the center out and the rectangle, the rect, is drawn from the corner to the right. You can actually change everything you draw. You can change it here in processing. And I'll show it later. This is not very important today, but this is also fun. So whenever you have doubts, you go, go back to your reference, you see rect, and you try to, you have to read it. And first it, it produces the examples. So it's always fun to see the examples and just copy paste them. And then uh, you see the description. This explains what the code does. And then it explains additional parameters or related code it has. So here we have an additional rect mode function you can, you can click it and see. Rect mode allows you to draw from the corner. Corners, instead of drawing with the width, it draws with the points. And for example, rect uh, radius or center. This is pretty much self-explanatory. So I'll just change this into rect mode center. I'll just put it here. And when I draw it, now you can see it's being drawn from the center outwards, okay? So this allows you to change the way processing draws. Uh, right now, this probably doesn't make much sense, but it's actually useful to have different modes of drawing. Um, so it's a thing people discuss, should it draw the same way? No, I don't think they reached a conclusion yet. Okay, so we have the, the basic drawing uh, done. Um, but I don't want to always Oh, okay, I'm I'm jumping ahead. Let's let's show, let's draw like like I did. Maybe Roberto, who attended the last uh, workshop, he already saw this. Uh, <laughs> I will do this. I usually do this as a fun activity. So the the basic thing we'll we'll just draw a Lego head. Okay, we'll just draw a simple block Lego head because it's always fun to draw and it's kind of complex. And I think we'll be able to draw it bef before the 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 interval the interval the the. the Recess? I don't break, know. Break, break. The break. The break. Sorry. Obrigado, <coughs> uh, Bruno. Então, um, I'll just save it if you want to continue to use it. Um, I will just save it with another name um, to Lego Heads. Zero to Lego Heads. And I'll. Um, uh, I perceive que fiz a janeira, não é? Porque mudei o nome. Mudei a. Did you have a copy? Okay. Well, I'll just I'll just deal with this like this. Okay. Let's save a copy. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, perfect. So uh, this will be zero one zero one basics. Yeah. Uh, auto save enables. So so for not to create a new code, so only for how to, how do I do this? It's all, it's only for me not to to give you um, always a new code. Okay, so in this in this sketch, this is the 23, 2023, 01, 02. I always do this like this. I always do the date or the names or whatever. So I'll I'll complete this later. So um, setup this creates a bitmap. So I'll just clean up because we don't need the comments right now because we already know this. This outputs the word. I don't need this also. I'll crack mode center, I'll keep it. Okay. Background, I'll keep it. Let's draw it. I let's draw it in black. So the first thing to know is I'll just clean up everything. The first thing to know is we uh, the first thing, sorry, we, the first thing to know is, is shapes. But shapes are, are not fun if we don't draw them with colors. So you have to know how to deal with colors. So this number 
it's kind of strange. Uh, maybe you're not used to doing colors with numbers, uh, if you've never paid attention to Photoshop, at least, because colors in computer are expressed in, in uh, several systems, RGB, HSL, or HSV, or HSV, or lab. Um, so this number also relates to a kind of color. Uh, uh, this one, you're probably not seeing it very well, but there's a slight difference between the grays and the whites. So this number is actually a color. When you press background 255, it just gives me a white background. If I say 255, 00, maybe this one you'll know because it gives me a pure red. So what we're seeing is colors. Colors are expressed in RGB. So RGB means 255 values for red, 255 values for green, and 255 values for blue. Whenever we just give it one number, it gives me a grayscale. And it's, it's the same as saying 255 to 55 to 55. It's the same as white. If we say 100, 100, and 100, it gives me a mid-tone gray. Um, 127 should be the mid, but I find this one more beautiful. So it's the same as saying 100 for everyone, same color, or we can produce, for example, uh, a greenish, a greenish, um, a greenish, uh, yeah, a lime green thing. So these colors are expressed in RGB. If, if you're not familiar with this, just go to your Photoshop menu and play with RGBs until you figure out how to see them. Um, so this is the first thing to do. So I'll just go for a mid-tone gray. And whenever we draw, if, I, if I'm going to draw a Lego head. So I'm going to start with the with the hex and I'm going to say I'm going to say 200, um, 200, and it has 100 height and 50 uh, width. So this will produce uh, oddly enough, this will produce me a white brick because the default color for processing to work with is white. So right now I would have to say, computer, pick up a yellow pen and draw me a yellow brick. If you say, computer, draw me a brick and then choose the color yellow, the computer will draw a white brick and then picks up a yellow pen and says, okay, what do you want me to do with the yellow color? So you have to first configure the properties and then draw first configure graphical properties and then draw. So to configure the graphical properties, we have the fill. So if you're going for yellow, let's just place 200, uh, 200, 100 and zero. And this will give me um, an orange yellow. Let's let's just pull this up to fifty. Um, still, okay, okay. This is more Lego-like brick color. And if you might have noticed, the computer by default also does a black outline, so it still has a black line around it. You might want to say, okay, the stroke is white or you might just want to say like in illustrator you just go in there and say no stroke with the with the the thing so just say instead of doing this you just i'll comment this out for you to know that you can paint a stroke or you just say no stroke notice that some comments like this one they don't take parameters so when you take out the colors you don't need to say which color to take out just take out the color okay Sim, estão a perceber? Está a para entender o inglês? Está muito bem. Ok. Eu sei que estou aí devagarinho. I know I'm going slow, but this will go fast forward in the next sections. And I just need to, for everyone to be on the same drawing page. So, you configure the fill, and if you want to take out the fill later, you just say no fill, like we'll be doing. And if you want to take out the stroke, you just say no stroke. Ok. Or if you want to paint it, just say it like this. Um, and this rectangle, as we've seen, we can add 10 pixels to the to the corner. So right now I want to, well, just five should be enough. 
Uh, and now I want to have to add here something like a, a head. So I'll just draw it then. I'll just say this is the face. Okay. I'll just go here and say this. Uh, I don't know how to say it in English. Top of the head. <sighs> So I'll just go again and copy this one. Because I'm drawing from the center, I just need to move upwards and draw it like this. So I know I'm going to move upwards half the size of it. Mm -hmm. And notice that I'm already introducing a, a different way of thinking we'll be using in a, in a few seconds uh, after the break. So I'm just going to move half of the size of the height of the Lego head upwards and draw another hex. So half of the size of the height is 25 so i just add or in this case i'm moving upwards so ele tá contar do zero positivo para baixo se eu quero mexer para cima tenho que subtrair so i'm going to take out from the number half of this number i'm just i'm going to take out half of that number let me just why not do this half of 25 or half of 50 like this i can actually do this and I can draw a second rectangle, a, sh a shorter one. Let's just draw a shorter one, uh, 30, like this. I'm moving a new rectangle upwards. If you can't see it, let's play with it. Let's paint it with a different color. We don't need because it's always the same color. But for the sake of it, let's just paint it a different color. I'll just do it browner, oranger. So I'm moving uh, greener. I'm moving a second rectangle upwards, half the size of it. So the size of the first one is 50. I'm just taking out from the vertical position half of 50. And I don't actually need to know the number because I can do the math here. Okay. O que nós estamos a fazer é fazer uma operação dentro da instrução. Isto é um bocadinho confuso. Mas se vocês usarem estes comandos no InDesign, por exemplo, nas caixas do InDesign, é o que nós fazemos quando dizemos que queremos mover um objeto onde ele está mais 50 milímetros para a direita, pomos mais 50, e é exatamente o que ele está a fazer. So whenever you're doing Illustrator, Photoshop, or whatever, uh, Affinity, uh, Publisher, when you're punching in numbers and calculations in the boxes, it, this is exactly the same thing. We're just putting it there. And I'm doing this because we'll change the way of thinking later. So we're doing relative measurements and everything will be relative later, okay? So this will be important for our way of thinking. So this is the, the current position, the original position, minus half of the height of the face and it moves upwards, okay? I'll just comment out the, the color because it's not very fun to have a green head. Uh, and now let's just paint two eyeballs here before the break black so i'm not going to change the call to the color to fill zero and i'm just going to say ellipse um let's just say 200 200 let's do it like thir uh, 10 and 30. let's just see what, what it does okay too big um maybe it's 5 and 15. Five and five and ten. Ah, now it's too small. Uh, eight and fourteen and fifteen. Okay. Okay. This is kind of nice. So this is an eyeball. We'll just move it to the left. So this is 200, 200. So we'll move one third to the left. So we'll move one third of the width. Uh, sorry, the width is a hundred. So we'll move it a hundred to the left. So I'm giving it minus Okay. Oh. Minus one third, desculpe, fiz um trigésimo. Um quarto. Minus one fourth to the left. Okay, this is kind of cool. Okay, I'm drawing it in the center and then I'm moving it one fourth of the width of the of the square to the left. So I'm gonna do the eyeballs, eyeballs. 
if you're having any trouble or you want to follow it, just open up the, the link I, I, I sent you and the code is updated over there. This is the right eyeball. And this is the left one. So I'll just copy this one. Desculpem, o meu computador fica um pouco lento com isto, não sei porquê. Até fazer um copy-paste, ok, tem que ser mais rápido, tem que descobrir o que está a passar. This is the left one. And so this will be just changing one sign. So moving one fourth to the left and now one fourth to the right. So doing two eyeballs and it just does it like this. So this is the process of drawing. It's kind of slow, I know, it's very slow. But this is, is it, it's the process. So I can actually move this uh, slightly to upwards also, but right now it's it's okay. So we have three minutes before the break. So I'll just show you how to do an arc without uh, many explanations, um, because I, I already did this in the in the previous workshop. Um, let's just go for arc. And the arc is very strange to program in in computers because it's using a different kind of, of notation, a different kind of way of thinking um, uh, when, we, when we draw. Uh, let me just open up a, a, a drawing app for you to see. The, the arc is drawn with very strange numbers over here. Um, next to speech. Então. Okay, estava lento, okay. Está mesmo lento. Uh, so, whenever we draw an arc, so whenever you draw an arc or a, or a circle, the computer has to compute one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So it's just drawing points very finely close together that will produce the, the arc. So what we need is a center, an initial point, this is us. Come on, a center. An initial point, a direction, and we need a final point. What the computer is doing is actually he's doing this, but he's drawing from here to there with an angle. Okay, so it's actually drawing everything. With an angle. So what this code describes here is you draw something with the center, x, y. So this is the center. And this is the width and the height of the arc. So if we want to draw an arc like this, guess what? This is part of a bigger ellipse. Right? So the ellipse is actually like this. And it starts with the angles here and there. Okay? So it's actually drawing this part. So we have the width over here. This is the width. And this is the height. And this is the center. So what this is doing is center x and y width and height and these two points these crazy points here this took me a lot to, to a lot of time to learn more more time to learn than i'm than i i, I should confess um, these two points are um are this so whenever you draw a circle in the computer well at least in processing the computer just says okay this one is zero, okay? And it starts to go, I'm sorry, and it starts to go like this. This is uh, 25 or uh, 30 degrees. This is 45 degrees. This is 90 degrees. But the, you don't see here, you see the zero, but you see something strange. This is pi. And if you remember your math from the, from the, from the K-12 uh, thing, Whenever you go around a circumference, a circle, uh, there's a, a special kind of units because 
Ok, não vou, eu não consigo explicar isto muito bem. I cannot explain this very well. Uh, the circle is a, an irrational, has an irrational dimension because it's infinite in, in detail. And whenever you make it bigger, it gets more detail. So, well, this is kind of crazy. Just go for YouTube and Google um, relation between pi and circumfer circumference. And it's really cool to, to see this explained visually. So the idea is this is zero. And this ratio, this angle, this num these points on the circle are expressed in radians. Radians are a special kind of unit that uses the, 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 the radius as the point of defining them. So, so what this says is 90 degrees is half pi. This is pi. And then this is three times half pi. And this, when it reaches again the end, this the zero when it comes back to zero this is two pi okay sorry about the the blobby thing and if you remember this is why a circumference when you calculate it in math when they teach us in math um uh, they teach us that the radius of a circumference of a circle is two pi r so yeah this kind of explains it so the 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 way the 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 number of points that exist on a, a given cir circle are always two times the radius times pi pi is always three fourteen um, yeah so the bigger the circumference the 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 bigger number of points the bigger the detail and you just have to know this so it zero starts in zero and uh, uh, an eighth of pi, a quarter pi, half pi, uh, three quarters pi, pi. <laughs> uh, don't know how to do the math. Five fourths pi, uh, three halves pi, something pi, two pi. I'm really bad at math, at math. Sorry. So just let's just play with these numbers for you to see. And you just say, okay, now I want to draw an arc or a line. So I'm just I'm just gonna copy this. I'm, I'm really lazy. Just. Let's, let's just do it like this. Copy one of these lines, paste it here, and ah, it created me a, a zero field uh, arc. I don't want this. Let's just configure. So this is the mouth. Oh, mouth, sorry. So let's just say no fill and stroke zero. I want the stroke to be black. Sorry about this, ah, but it's too thin. And I want this to be with the bigger weights, stroke weights. Let's give it, I don't know, eight pixels. Eight pixels might be too much. Stroke weight, weight, weight. Is it, is it, is it okay? Tens um, um T, tens um T mais. Ah, sorry, obrigado. Não, não tens. No, uh... Esta é aquela altura em que isto não é propositado, so this was not done on purpose, sorry. Sometimes I do this on purpose. Let's just go to shape. Uh, é com o H, é com o H. O problema foi o H. Ok, so, so I, would go like, I would go like this. I would search for the code. <laughs> obrigado, obrigado <laughs> pela correção. I would search for the code in the properties of a shape and I would go here and uh, copy it because, yeah, well, thinking and writing at the same time, sometimes not very good. Ok, stroke weight. Okay, the T is in the wrong position. Okay, stroke weight, too, it's too big. Maybe the six would be better and it's in the wrong position. So I will I will get the stroke here on the center. Let's see what happens when I place it on the center. 200, 200, and it's over here. And you see it's doing here a circle, but it's kind of, it's kind of funny right now. It's kind of crooked. So I'll just reduce this. So think with me. Vamos mudar aqui para o sketch. Think with me. So if we have a circle, okay. If we have a circle like this, uh, <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, thank you. I have to go very slow because my computer is very, very slow because of Zoom. If we have a circle and I, uh, and I want to draw this kind of ball, so first of all, I should do this. First of all, I should do this like this. Maybe I should do an ellipse, a wider ellipse, right? And it would be like, yeah, like this, right? 
So I would go from the center to maybe a quarter pi and the center to maybe uh, un quarto, dois quartos, tres quartos, three quarters pi. So I'll just try to go like this, starting in a quarter pi and going to three quarters pi. I know this might be strange for people like me, graphic designers, but just bear with me. If pi is my measurement and I go by sectors, so one quarter, so, so I just go one slash four times pi. I really don't need to do the maths because it does the maths. And three times four, oh, three times uh, three slash four times pi. Okay, it was well, not bad. I kind of like it. Okay, uh, it's it's on the wrong place, but let's leave it like this. So, uh, this is our first drawing. So, drawing with numbers. So, we did ellipse, we did rects, and we did arcs. Okay. Uh, okay, we'll Bruno. I'm going to propose to do, for us to do a short break for bathroom, water, whatever, and we'll come back in uh, to do the final hour. Uh, Uhum. E vamos transformar este desenho numa, numa matriz de, de cabeças. And we'll change this into a matrix of Lego heads. I just take the chance to welcome to o professor Rodrigo Carvalho. That meantime... Ah, não vi, não vi. Uh, yes, he entered. So, welcome, Rodrigo. Viva, como estás? Tudo bom? Pelo menos ele entrou, não sei se já saiu. Se já saiu, olha. Os meus participantes estão desativados. Não estou a ver. Não. Olha, mas entrou. Saiu. Pronto, ok. Pronto. <risos> um, ok, o, o, o outro colega, o professor Rodrigo, uh, tinha entrado e também vai estar uh, convosco. Uh, e pronto, estava-lhe apenas a, a, a desejar uh, as boas-vindas. Mas deve ter saído, Pedro, entretanto. Ele entrou, tá. eu abri a porta, entretanto saiu. Tá. Uh, Uh, so the break, you propose the break until uh, half past uh, six? Yeah, it's until half past seven minutes to do just to fetch some water and go to the bathroom for people who need it. And or to just to excuse me, you post here. I can be here to answer questions. Uh so para aqueles que precisarem de um descanso. Okay. Tá toda a gente com pouca vontade de falar. Olá, Stefan, viva. Estava-te aqui a escrever, digo-te, enfim, oralmente. Eu sei que entraste mais tarde, não sei se me estás a ouvir neste momento. Olá, sim, não quis interromper. Uh, pareciam sim. lançados com os arcos e com o pino. Pronto, mas já agora aproveito, sim, arcos e afins, uh, aproveito. Pronto, entretanto, sintam-se à vontade para fazer um intervalo. Uh, apenas uh, Stefan e, e outros que tenham entrado, entretanto, eu fui abrindo as portas. Nós estamos a gravar a sessão, uh, portanto, se houver alguma, enfim, uh, algo contra uh, esse facto, uh, por favor, digam. Isto foi exposto logo no início, uh, às seis e meia, Leona, até às seis e meia, está bem? Seis minutinhos. Uh, foi exposto no início da, da aula. Uh, qual é o objetivo? É apenas e uh, único, pensando em vocês, uh, tem a ver com vocês poderem depois ter acesso um, uh, no fundo, olha, no caso Stefan, step by step, no teu caso és aluno, do, és estudante da, da pós-graduação em design de interação e jogos, também temos aqui um outro, um outro colega da pós-graduação em design de tecnologias para a saúde um, e outras pessoas externas de fora, é o que é excelente, é, toda esta comunidade aqui, é precisamente esta a nossa ideia, e, e o objetivo é esse, é que no caso do, da pós-graduação em design de interação em jogos, ao contrário da pós-graduação em design de tecnologias para a saúde, isto, esta, enfim, estas, estas, este workshop já faz parte, como vos enviei hoje no e-mail, não é? Portanto, e como está no nosso calendário, na nossa programação, do, do módulo 6, Uh, portanto, prototipagem e implementação o professor Rodrigo Assaf também está aqui connosco um, e portanto o objetivo é ele de facto termos este kick-off deste módulo com este workshop houve esta oportunidade e portanto uh, pareceu-nos óbvio que seria de aproveitar e portanto já faz parte num, como disse no início o objetivo não é que 
não é ter uma relação direta com os vossos projetos, depois, obviamente, que poderão aplicar estas competências e outras na implementação do vosso projeto, se for adequado, não é? Mas, no fundo, é isso. Portanto, está integrado no modo de prototipagem e implementação. Isto, nós hoje, hoje, quarta e sexta, mas fundamentalmente hoje é, ainda é mais importante, vamos ter esta workshop até às sete, sete e meia, por aí, à altura em que depois... Uh, vão para o, para o Teams, para que o, uh, portanto, as pessoas de, de, da pós-graduação em Design de Interação em Jogos, para o professor Rodrigo Assaf falar um bocadinho sobre o módulo 6. Tá, questões relacionadas com a abordagem, avaliação e afins. Está bem? Ok, bom. Obrigado pela explicação. Tá bem. Pronto, então até já. Até já. Pedro, boa tarde. É, Matheus aqui. Olá, Olá Matheus. É, o, o Jason, ele comporta carregamentos de SGV? Eu posso, por exemplo, copiar o código Sim. SGV do Illustrator e colar ali? Uh, espera, tu, tu podes... Uh, Sim, depende do que tu vais fazer no Jason. Tu uhum. podes, se tiveres o objeto... No, Tens duas maneiras, ou tens o objeto descrito no JSON como um objeto, como um blob, não é? como, como os dados, ou então tens o URL do SVG e carregas uh, duas vezes assincronamente, ou, ou carregas tudo de forma síncrona. Tá, entendi. Então eu posso carregar tanto, vamos dizer assim, é, totalmente implementável, quanto como um link para ele ser carregado quando for solicitado. Sim, sim. Eu, o, que eu, o que eu te recomendaria era carregar os assets em separado, os, os SVGs preparados, como se fosse um mapa de sprites ou como se fosse um mapa de assets, uhum. e podes pô-los num array específico ou podes carregá-los individualmente, e depois carregar os, os JSON, os dados numéricos, os, e depois ligá-los com a tua lógica. Mas o, o, os exemplos, eu não, eu não, lá está, eu não sou programador, Mateus. Uhum. Uh, os, os poucos exemplos que eu usei da APIs na net normalmente têm os assets, aquelas coisas, por exemplo, de, de aquelas aplicações para fazer a meteorologia o tempo, carregam os dados e normalmente vão os, o, o nublado ou, ou os gatos, ou os, ou os emoticons eles vão buscá-los a uma biblioteca que é comum, ou seja, para todos os números 10 vão carregar uma nuvem, para todos os números 12 vão carregar um sol, portanto o asset visual, o SVG ou o bitmap, o, o JPEG acaba por aparecer várias vezes ligado àquele valor, por isso é que eu não sei se pôr o SVG no JSON é boa hipótese, é boa ideia porque a partida vais reutilizar, não é? Não, eu estava pensando em pôr um como... Porque assim, é, basicamente o background é uma cor, daí beleza. Só que na frente desse background tem alguns elementos gráficos, entendeu? Sim. Então, eu estava pensando, ou eu colocar como uma imagem total, né? Então, do jeito que você comentou aí, é, digitando o código e tal, e, e subir como imagem... Ou, fazer, ou montar esse background por partes, para talvez depois eu poder animá-lo. Então, daí eu pensei em, por exemplo, uh, separar logo, como um SGV, uh, separar os outros elementos, que são umas casinhas, como um SGV, subir esses dois para fazer esse background, entendeu? Ah, pronto, pronto. Uh, vai, uh, vamos, nós vamos, pronto, ok. Nós estamos a trabalhar neste, se, se, não estiver engan, se eu não estiver enganado no link que partilhei. Eu vou mostrar isso de seguida, nós vamos carregar uma fonte. Nós, tu vais poder carregar aqui os, o que eu faria era fazer uma pasta para assets SVG tá. e depois outra para JSON ou ias buscar o JSON na net e, hum. e, e o teu código é que vai juntar os dois sim o teu, teu background da tua casa teu, e podes carregar consoante os dados as localizações ou o tamanho consoante os dados que recebes do, do JSON beleza uma pasta sub e depois chama não vi 
Eu crio uma pasta, subo esses axes e depois chamo Sim. eles conforme precisar. Bem, nós vamos fazer isso com o... Eu vou transformar... Hoje vamos tentar fazer três coisas agora na próxima hora. Uh, que é criar o... desenhar por funções uh, para modularizar, criar repetição e carregar por texto. E uh, tu vais poder fazer aqui neste... Desculpa. Esta, esta setinha uhum. permite-te criar, por exemplo, uma folder sim, assets sim. ou, por exemplo, SVGs. Né? E agora aqui vais fazer Upload File e procuras aqui um SVG. Uh, vou procurar no meu computador, se encontrar aqui algum. Normalmente tenho logotipos. Uh, pode ser backup, pode ser. Uh, ok. Como é que está? Uh, o computador está super lento. O que é que aconteceu? Não aconteceu nada. Abrir. Sim. Ok. Uh, vou fazer aqui. Ok. Pode ser o logotipo, nem de propósito. Né? Ele já fica aqui. E tu vais poder carregar o SVG no. no no ficheiro, eu já te vou mostrar, vou mostrar com uma fonte e já vais ver como é que ele carrega para um SVG. Mas já, já a, a resposta pode ser mais óbvia, Mateus, como é que se fazia? Era assim, uh, SVG. Vimos aqui, não temos, temos shape, temos uh, image. Tá, então ele suporta com imagem. Ok. Está aqui, tens que fazer uma nova função, nós já vamos fazer. Okay. Carregas, só que em vez de ser, o, o, em vez de ser uma, um JPEG, é um SVG e depois desenhas só image com o SVG que queres. Okay. Ok. Obrigado. P5, P5 Image. Eu não tenho a certeza do que estou a dizer. SVG. Já lá vamos ver. Ok, posso tirar essa dúvida. De qualquer maneira posso tirar a dúvida. Se não fizermos hoje, eu tiro a dúvida logo à noite e mando, ponho no fecheiro, está bem? Fica na paz, eu já posso dar uma pesquisada também. Ele, mas pelo que eu entendi, ele vai ser tratado como imagem, então eu vou subir como uh, lá. Sim, mas tens acesso ao interior, porque isto é, isto é lembra de que isto é JavaScript, isto parece sim. uma linguagem, a única coisa é que o render é feito num elemento canvas, é feito um render com uma bitmap, portanto ele não fica, uhum. tu podes uhum. lidar com ele com JavaScript, aceder ao interior e essas coisas todas, mas tudo que o JavaScript permite, permite fazer aqui, mas depois ele faz render como... como... Mas vou tirar essa dúvida, porque eu não me lembro de fazer isto, está bem? Não estou a dizer de cor. Obrigado. Ora bem, são 18h33. Pedro, eu fiquei com a ideia, agora está ali, passar ali pelas funções, que houve uma determinada altura que querias falar do DOM, não sei se é hoje. Uh, vamos falar invari invariavelmente, vamos falar na próxima sessão. Sim. Para explicar o que é, que é isso que está a acontecer aqui no DOM, porque é um bocadinho mais confuso. Para, para quem nunca fez JavaScript e manipular o DOM, o que é que é o DOM, às tantas vou... vou é mais o Sim. Para a segunda sessão, desculpa. Ora bem, eh, para não confundir, para não irmos já aquilo. Então, uh, so, um, we're going off track. I'm, I'm, I'm the king of going off track on this, on this thing, so please beware uh, with, with things you ask. Uh, uh, ah, ok, Mark, tava, Mark was telling me a thing. Obrigado, Mark. Uh, ok. <laughs> Eu não, tava, não ia para esse caminho, mas é uma boa ideia. Uma sugestão de estarmos a utilizar o, uma suggestion of using um, uh, angle mode. Uh, hmm. Not here. Ok, we'll do this later. Ok, angle mode. Yeah. We can actually draw instead of using um, radians, we can use degrees, but I'm, I'm, I prefer to use radians, at least for the sake of the explanation in, in these workshops, but this is a cool thing for you to show. I'll just put it over here. You might want to check this out in the future here. Lips. Ok, perfeito. Thank you, Mark. Uh, 
so as uh, as always the code i'm working here if you want to follow along uh, to everyone uh, it's over here it's in the chat so i'll just repaste it again um so this allows me to draw we had a uh, um a lego head over here but first first of all this is a static lego head so if i wanted to do two lego heads well i would have to copy all this code again and draw all this code again and actually to correct this kind of thing it's not very fast so let's try to change our code into working with this in a bit more efficient way so i started by saying that whenever you want to draw or do more than one instruction you would group these instructions into special functions so what i'm going to suggest we do now is to um sorry i'm multitasking this is the draw with them draw with them what's the draw with them? ah with with the graphic properties with them properties uh so what i'm going to suggest to do is i'm going to change everything i'm drawing here actually we're going to draw lego head so everything here in this code is drawing this drawing kind of crooked sketch so i'm just going to cut all the codes i just did control x command x and just going to so, so draw lego head and what what would be perfect was would be to say to processing to p5js okay draw me a lego head and p5js would know what to do with the lego head so this is not a function but we can add this function to the existing code base of processing just by saying here computer i'm going to teach you what drawing a lego head means so if i say function lego head lego head so what defines a function as you might have noticed by now is the word function so a group of instructions it's a function and it has a name notice that it turned blue already because the computer okay it's a function i know what lego head is right now it's nothing whenever you call lego head it does nothing and we just paste everything we just take took out from the drawing function inside the brackets of the function lego head so whenever we call lego head it draws the lego head and nothing happens why because the computer we, we just told the computer whenever we call a lego head whenever we say ellipse rect lego head it does something so now the computer knows what to do when you say lego head and it just goes draws this lego head so we just have to say whenever we want to draw lego head we just call this function call lego head and like magic it draws out the lego head again and right now well yes the problem is it's always drawing the lego head in the same position remember when we draw uh, when we drew um hect we said x and y we always told the computer where to draw the rects x y x y always in the same position in different positions we also can do this in the lego head for example i can say i want to draw lego head in the position 100 200 so what I'm saying to the computer, I was expecting an error, but JavaScript is very cool. And it, it just says, okay, I'll try to do whatever you do and doesn't throw an error. This is very annoying. It should throw an error. This is actually a cool thing of, of doing these functions. It's overloading the function, but it's another, it's an explanation for another day. So it's, we want to draw the Lego head in the position a hundred, 200. So bear with me with a second. Uh, I'll, for the sake of brevity of this workshop, I'm condensing here a, a cool concept. I'm condensing here the concept of variables. I'm going to say to the computer, I'm going to give you a number and you're going to store it. So, but I'm, I'm going to say it's maybe I should, I should do an, uh, an, a break and explain this variable thing. Uh, 
Yes. Let me say how. Let me think how I'm gonna do this. Let's let's do it like this. Let's let's not do it. I'm I'm going too fast. So sorry. Let's explain the concept of variables. I want to draw a uh, I want to draw a, a rectangle in a specific position. So I'm I'm gonna say I'm, I want a position x and a position y. So I'm gonna create a special kind of box, a box for x that I'm gonna store a number a hundred and a special box for y, and I'm gonna store the another number. And then when I want to use them, I just want to say, I want to use the position X and I want to use the position Y. So I'm going to say, how to declare a variable? Um, declaring variables. Uh, if you read the original manual from processing, it, it's going to say, you just have to say var X. And this is the old way to declare variables in JavaScript. You can actually still use it. Uh, it's not very cool right now. and it sometimes it gives you leakage problems so i encourage you to say let x i don't know what the let let means uh, maybe someday i'll know but right now i don't know what the let means var is pretty easy to know variable so this just tells the computer give me a box give me a space in the memory and put a number in there okay right now just give me a, a space uh, like a shelf give me a space where to put something so declaring variables and this will be a special kind of variable for numbers. And now we're going to initialize the variables. So you can actually do this in one sentence, but the way I'm doing this is more uh, propedeutic and more pedagogical. Always tell the computer you're going to use, then tell the number you want to put inside, and then use the number. Okay, three operations. Give me a box, put something inside the box, use the box. So initialize the variables, I'll just say x equals 100. So right now, the computer, when it's preparing the variable, it before starting the program, it stored, it gives me space in the memory, space on the shelf to put a number. Then the program starts and it puts a number on the shelf, 100. And whenever I want to use that number, I just say, give me a number, for example, here. And the fun starts here. If I say X, everything, now it's it moved to 100. But remember, I was drawing this in a relative position. So I say X over here. And I say X over here. And I say X over here. And everything is moving relatively, relatively, Relative, relative means <laughs> moving according to that x position. So I'm just moving everything according to the original x. So what you might have found out by now is that if I move the x, for example, the x is 100, but for example, what if I just say x equals 200? then it just goes to the right, or 300. Everything moves at the same time because everything was drawn according to that variable, right? If you change the variable, you're changing the position. Set. So this is a variable. You store a number in the box, you change the number in the box, everything changes when it's using it. It's so fun that you can actually say on real time, if you say the X equals to the mouse, so now you have a moving Lego head. Right? So this is a numeric variable. It's called an int integer, a uh, number inteiro. Uh, we can use another kind of variables. Uh, we uh, can use strings, we can use floating point numbers, so the numbers with commas, we can use uh, booleans, true or false, and we can use uh, several uh, types of variables like you, you'll see. So this concept of a variable is very important and very powerful. And this allows us, for example, we're drawing a Lego head. Maybe I want to draw a second Lego head. Guess what? But I want to draw a second Lego head on the right. And you just do it like this. Oops, no, more to the right. So 
if we draw one in one position, and then if we draw another one in the another, we change the variable, we change the position, and we draw another one. So it actually is in, is drawing one in the one position and updating the position and drawing in the new position, and we can actually draw a second one, a third one. And you might have seen, okay, he's doing a lot of code by hand, probably like he did before. He's gonna modularize it. See, we'll modularize that if. Okay. So you can actually start drawing things, changing positions according to the variables. Okay. So drawing, drawing relatively to one point and changing the origin points according to a variable. So if the origin point changes, all the drawing changes. Sim? Isto é o princípio da coisa. Estamos a ficar muito perto de, de uma visualização. Uh, claro que, so of course, that this is not very practical to to draw this to draw it like this. So I'm going to change. I'm going to slightly change. So this was a. a I'm going to save this. Um, save file. Um, duplicates and I'll have it later. Um, my functions, uh, duplicated and my variables. Okay, so if um, I'm gonna go back, uh, I'll, I'll put it in on the folder later, uh, for you to see if you there's already um, a sketch called variables and data types that explains basic variables like string variables number variables over here but i found it, it i find it more useful for it for us to 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 see to see this applied in in a, in a real context so i'm just going back to our our drawing so declaring variables initializing variables and using the variables so i'm just updating the variables and using them uh, of course, this is not very practical because it would be more fun instead of always doing this. I would I would just say I want X to be here, and I want the X to be here. So this first number could be our X. Draw a new. So what this does is instead of always saying this is the new x draw me in the in new lego head we can actually give a number inside the function like we did for the rectangle and this variable this is a specific kind of variable it's called a parameter and number it's a number that we we pass it to the function and this number will be received by the function you, you might imagine this as an outlet when for example in america you you have uh, or the uk you have outlets with three pegs and three holes so things have to to connect and right now we have one peg one hole it has to connect so this ver this variable that goes inside has to connect with this thing over here so it's going to it's going to send a number and it has to receive the number okay it has to connect so I'm using a, a special kind of variable, a, param a parameter. I'm going to receive it here. So I'm going to send the hundreds and it's going to store temporarily the number of hundreds inside the function and it's going to use it. So this special kind of variable, this parameter, uh, the way I'm doing it, I'm, I'm using an underscore. I could be saying like, this is the X like here and this will connect. I'm just using the underscore to to let you know that this number is plugging in. This is coming from outside, okay? So like a connecting uh, stroke. So I'm just gonna say it's receiving an X here. And right now, if you press play, it's already doing this, okay? without having to say the variable. So I, I'm sending a number, a variable, trying a Lego head with a function with parameters, okay? X. Usually I, I, I comment out the, I, I usually I just copy paste this and put it over here for me to know 
when to call the function, I need to call it with one, two, three, four, five parameters. Okay, because as you might have guessed, I'm just moving it horizontally, but I'm going to move it also vertically. So I'm calling it with 100 horizontal, 250 horizontal, 390 horizontal. Whenever I call it, whenever I draw Lego head, it gets drawn with a different position. I just use the X. So you might have guessed it. I'm just going to do Y also. And I'm going to say, okay, it's going to receive a value for Y. Y. Uh, you should do spaces between this stuff because it's easier to read. Otherwise, it just gets too complicated. Uh, okay, this one is not me. This is it, this one. Why? And yeah. And yeah, this one. So right now, yeah, I don't have the why. So it's expecting me to, to, to receive two parameters. So here, I'm sending two parameters. And it's expecting me to send two parameters. So I'm, I'm, I will have to say 200, 200, 200. OK. But right now, I'm not obliged to draw them all on the same position. I can just say 100. And I can say 300. And I can say mouse Y. So one of them will be moving according to my mouse. So the fun of using variables is that it gets updated every time we draw. Okay, And we can use the same drawing with different properties, different conditions. So if I want to draw it bigger or smaller, I can just give it another um, variable. Isto foi um bocadinho rápido. This was kind of fast for variables. Mas deu para perceber? Was it okay? The concept. Okay. Portanto, devíamos ter desenhado um pouco mais com variáveis. Uh, Estou a ficar um bocadinho aflito com o tempo. Peço desculpa. I'm getting a bit worried about the time. But bear with me. So we'll, we'll, be using, we'll be using this concept of declaring, initializing, and, and using them later. Just we have three sessions. We'll, we'll cover this all. OK. So right now, I'm, worried, I'm just worried about drawing, modularizing our drawing. We're drawing a Lego head. And of course, we drew a Lego head with, with a specific width, remember? 100 for the width half the width so if i'm using like an ellipse x y width and height i can actually do this also i can actually say i have a width here a hundredth for width okay uh, and i'll receive this width here sorry and i'll just say this will be W. This will be W. Uh, sorry, uh, this is height. Uh, no, this is width. Uh, why is this W times four? Okay, okay. Uh, this is W. This is W. No, uh, no, desculpe. This, this was no. Sorry, this was this was okay. This is height. Sorry, this is double. Sorry. This is why I should. Oh, it's, it's kind of stuff. For it to be very right. okay. And um, sixty. So right now I don't have any value for this. So the width. This would be two times three. Okay, this will be something like this, two thirds of width. This will give me roughly the same width. So if I press play, 
uh, something went wrong. Oh no, it's okay. So if I give the width, the fun of this is that I can now customize every, everyone is the same width. So this will be, the second one will be wider and the third one will be shorter. You see, uh, maybe I can put it over here. Uh, no, sorry, 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 sorry. I can put it over here. So this allows me to draw specific things, but this this is not getting the the drawing in the position I, I'm I'm comfortable with. Um, I'm gonna change this. Uh, I'm gonna change this a little bit. So um, let me do let me do a little bit of 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 uh, of uh, changes. So I'll I'll just use the these variables for the Lego head. So I'll just use the change the name of the variable. Every variable has to be declared with the with the name so i could call it lego width like this the lego width will be a hundred okay and i'll i'll change this i'll change this later just bear with me for a second i want to explain something this will be the scale sorry my computer is really slow this will be the scale, sorry. Um, so I'm gonna, instead of using the width, I'm using the width as a variable. So I'm just gonna say, Lego width here, Lego width here, Lego width here. And Lego width here. This will still give me the, the, the Lego head. What I want to do is to scale this uh, Lego head. So before this is a very important concept i'm going to explain the matrix transformation so instead of always drawing things in a specific position i'm going to always draw from the zero let me go into the matrix push matrix uh, pop push push matrix hmm. reference transform um, no. Push and pop. Okay, push and pop. Okay. Uh, I'm going to put this here. Uh, push and pop, sorry. Yeah. Yeah, sorry. I was kind of confusing this with the, with the, Java, the Java edition. So I'm going to do a different kind of editing because i'm gonna do a scale so sorry about this uh instead of always drawing from the from the center sorry instead of drawing from a specific position i'm gonna draw everything always from the zero okay instead of drawing it to the right i'm gonna move the paper to the position i want to draw and always draw it from the zero this allows me to do rotations and scaling independently of each object. If you ever did 3D, you, you kind of know what I mean. I'll, I'll just do a, a, quick, a quick explanation uh, like this. I'm not, instead of moving the object over here and drawing, because now I wanna say, I wanna scale this to be bigger. Um, if I do this as I'm writing right now, the scaling function takes the zero into account. So whenever it scales, it's gonna be scaling like this because it's gonna scale everything bigger. Or if I want to rotate it, if I want to rotate it like this, whenever I rotate, it's gonna rotate from here. So the square is gonna be here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to change the zero, zero, to the position I want to draw. And I'm going to draw it from the zero here. Because when I want to scale, I'm going to scale it like this from the zero outwards. And if I want to rotate it, I'm going to rotate it from the zero and not from here. And it's going to rotate. So 
what this call is, it's called a matrix transform. So I'm going to change the zero, zero matrix onto the position, onto the new position. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm uh, sorry, uh, in Portuguese. O que eu vou fazer é mudar a posição do zero para poder aplicar transformações de escala, rotação, log hot scale. Se alguém, se alguém de vocês já fez 3D, sabe que temos que fazer isto. Mudamos a posição do cursor para aplicar transformações e voltamos a pôr tudo no mesmo sítio. Um, so, let me just go into here. First, we have to say push to freeze the, the state of the drawing, change the coordinates, and then in the end, we have to do a pop uh, to put everything back. So what we're going to do is say, whenever we're drawing, we're going to do a push. I'm just going to say copy so you can actually see it later. OK, as a comment. Uh, this freezes the, 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 the states of the drawing so it can go back. And in the end, I'm going to do pop. This restore the coordinate system. Um, now I'm really getting stressed about the time. Sorry about this. Uh, okay, move the coordinate system. And where where am I going to move the coordinate system? I'm going to move the coordinate system to the new position, to the next uh, y. So I'm going to translate to the new X and the new Y. And then I'm always gonna draw from the center, from the zero, okay? I know I'm always changing stuff. I know usually students complain a lot about this. You'll learn that this is a process. And when you get used to it, you'll do it right from the start. So what I'm doing, is actually changing is i didn't change something uh, i don't know what which thing i did um, i forgot this one is zero and zero and i'm missing still one okay so I'm always drawing from the center what i'm doing is i'm moving the center whenever i'm drawing so instead of drawing a thing here i'm moving the zero zero up to here drawing from the center from the zero zero and then restoring drawing here Center, zero, zero, drawing to the left, to the right, moving here, to the center, to the right. And this allows me to do a fun stuff. Uh, if I want to, for example, notice that I, I'm slowly scrolling to the position I want. I'm drawing the X, Y, and if I'm using a one here. I'm going to use the one as a scaling factor, X, Y, and scale. So if I want to do a bigger drawing, I'm going to do a 2. If I want to do a smaller drawing, I'm going to do a 0.5. And notice that this allows me to do very fun stuff like grouping and uh, stretching and, uh, and com com compacting like Illustrator. You just grab the, the frame and pull it outwards or pull it inwards. This allows us to do this kind of stuff. Scale, lock, hot scale. I'm missing rotation. Uh, Let's put it here. Always do it by order equals mock hot scale. Uh, so I'm missing rotation here. Uh, as you see, we'll see it later. So I'm going to scale it by, you guess what, by S. So now this allows me to do scaling in a very fast way by applying matrix transform. So move the paper, make the paper bigger, make the paper smaller, and draw. Well, I'm using paper, but actually it's the, the arm of the computer that's drawing, OK? Um, so just make it larger, just make it smaller by applying transformation, and then make it larger, go back to the, the, to the position. So it goes back to the corner. Oh, sorry, to this corner, OK? So go to the new position, make it bigger or smaller, draw it and go back to the original state. So remember where it was. Uh, remember where it was. Move the paper to the new position. Scale the, the drawing to the new dimension. And draw it like you were drawing. 
So this allows us to do this kind of operations, drawing with variables and functions, allows us to do very fast customized drawings, okay? Sim? Mais ou menos. Bruno, estás aí com uma cara séria? Não foi, não foi a melhor explicação? Não, 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 parece muito bem. Sim? Fernando, também estás a dizer que sim, mais ou menos? André? Ok, sorry guys, the only guys with cameras are the guys where I'm going to ask people. So if you want to give me some feedback, please just help me out. Okay. Uh, just just uh, an add is, is that uh, the variables concept needs to be yeah, in my opinion death, uh, but perhaps in the next uh, session. <laughs> Estou concentrado no desenho, estou preocupado com o desenho. Uh, I'm worried about the drawing mode. Uh, yeah, yeah, you're, you're right. The variable thing was was a mess. Yeah, I still need to explain this variable thing better. Yeah. Okay, so we're right now we're drawing it with with um, with numbers. I'm just worried about this. So whenever we do groups, we function things, and we can actually modularize the function by giving it the numbers we need, and applying transformation. So this is a very fast way to do it. We can actually for just for helping out uh, with variables we can actually for example set the color for the for the um, for the drawing for example um, let's lego color and there's no correct way to define a variable i'm doing with an underscore i usually don't do this i'm just doing this for the clarity of the of the, the of the of the zoom you can actually say like this with camelback notation or the, the variables just have to have a name and it has to start with a letter, okay? So Lego color or Lego color as you wish. Um, and I can say the color, so you can see the, here that I'm using a variable, just a name, a box. And this box, I put a number, I put a hundred in it. And I can say Lego color, I can put a color inside. This is strange, but actually color is also a number, but you can say color, and I can say 230, 200, I don't know, zero. And whenever I want to change the color of the Lego, I just say this guy here, the fill, gets filled with the variable I want to use. Okay. So right now it's going to change into a lighter yellow, yeah, pale, a paler yellow. But I can, whenever I want to change it, instead of changing the color, down there, I can just change it here. And it changes for all the drawings, okay? So variables, the difference between variables and parameters, it's the, I'm using a special kind of variable, a global variable. It's controlling all, every drawing I'm using, because I'm using one, it's like a palette, it's a, a color, a color uh, swatch. In I'm always referencing Illustrator and InDesign, sorry. Usually I'm used to teaching graphic design students, so the reference are Adobe programs. <laughs> So it's like using a, a swatch on the on the on the color panels, and I'm defining this this color in the swatch panel. So I'm just changing the color uh, in the swatch, and this is using the swatch Lego color. So variables get used I'm, for the sake of simplicity. These variables get used globally. Okay, we use variables across the whole program, and parameters get used specifically in each instance of the drawing. We'll later figure one way to do this also. Um, okay, so right now, green, not, not really my, my, my choice of color, because this is confusion on it. Okay, Legos are yellow, better in yellow. Um, so um, we've drawn this. So right now, I'm, I'm, I want to explain the last concept that at, at least was programmed for today. Um, it's the concept of loops. I'm doing, right now, I'm preparing the program once, setting the color, setting the width, and I'm drawing. I draw a Lego head and it took, took me a long way to, to draw because I wanted to, to do more. So I took out the drawing code into a function and called the function three times. But I still have to call the function three times. And if I want to draw it like, when you're thinking about data visualization and the examples I showed you, they don't draw three things. They draw, they draw 3,000 things, okay? You wanna draw very big data sets. 
And that's the thing with visualization in computers. You draw many data points. So what we're going to do is we're going to find a way to uh, aut uh, to automate this. Uh, so we want to do this in cycles. So I, I want to do one, two, three, four, five, ten, one thousand, two thousand times. And the computer is very good at doing things uh, in the rough. Uh, is a brute, raw, it brute raw, force. See, raw, raw, uh, raw way. I don't yeah, know. the raw code. So the way to the way to do it is I'm gonna call this Lego function many times, and the concept is a loop. So I'm gonna open the reference. Sorry about this reference, and I'm gonna show you. So we're moving out of the drawing section, okay, and going to the logic session. With the logic session will be started today and finished in the next uh, in the next session okay so the the logic section uh, of the of the of coding uh, should be probably over here in structure i have no clue uh, i have no clue where it is or okay uh, help uh, four is in the foundation. Okay, so it's it's a very foundational concept. So it's in the foundational uh, foundation ah, here. Foundation. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, so its core concepts are here in the foundation. Uh, ah, it was actually So they've updated this to let's const. Okay, we haven't seen this one. We're gonna see this one in the next next section. The function we've been seeing today, and we're gonna do the four. Okay, this is a loop. Mm -hmm. Okay, this allows us, yeah, just creates a loop that's ex useful to executing multiple times. It's pretty obvious. So we're gonna do it one, two, three, four, five, 1,000 times. So a loop is the way to do it. And the way this works is like this. Uh, maybe I should save this, I'll save it later. Okay, uh, duplicate. Yeah, okay. Uh, yeah, I'll organize it later and I'll go back to my original code. Sorry about this. To, just to get this thing always on the same page. And this will be, oops. But Look, this will, will help us to clarify the variables also. Yeah, uh, yeah, uh, yeah. Maybe I should have dedicated 15 more minutes to variables, but okay. I, I'm trying to go very visually today because whenever I try to explain this, I always go the engineer way and it's, uh, I think there are people kind of get bored with this. <laughs> Sorry about this. I'm trying out a new thing with you. Uh, so I want to draw Lego head. Uh, so multiple times. So instead of just going one, two, three, whenever you copy paste code or you write the same code more than once, maybe there's an easier or an automated way to do this in the computer. So you just go for a loop cycle. Maybe it's easier to say cycle over here. Mm -hmm. So to do a loop, a loop is something like this. I'll just write it again. It's easier. Okay. Whenever you I'll, I'll just, I'll, I'll write it from the beginning. You just write for, whenever you write something in the computer, like uh, this is a, a function, an instruction or a function. Whenever you open a parenthesis, close the parenthesis. Whenever you open a code block, close the code block. So the, the editor already helps us doing this because this is very easy to make mistakes um, when you do this kind of stuff. So the for loop just says computer, while something that runs here is true, do something. So what, what it does inside here is say, okay, the computer will draw a Lego head. I'll just say Lego head, uh, preference debate. Lego head. And I'll just say, for, for now, I'll just say like this. Draw me a Lego head, position X 100, Y 100 and one. So it, it will draw a Lego head in the same position. And how many Lego heads I want to draw? Let's start with five. And how do I tell the computer to do five Lego heads? So I'll say, computer, start counting from zero. So I'll have to say, say the computer, you have to start counting. So you have to create a variable, let's 
i. So this the number i is called usually called for iteration. I iterator, iter, iterator. I think it's like this. You say mm -hmm. iteração, um ciclo. So you define start with a number and you tell the computer there's a number called i equals zero. Start with zero. And the computer goes, okay, I'm starting with zero. I'm using my hand, the fingers in my hands to, to do zero. So starting with zero and say, do something while the number, the fingers in my hand, the numbers reach five. Okay, so I under five. So under five, but I have five fingers. So the, the people who are not used to computer programming count with me. Zero, one, two, three, four, five. Uh, sorry, yeah, zero. So, uh, <laughs> looks like my coffee is <laughs> Zero. Uh, so, zero is the first one. Zero, one, two, three, four. Scooping. Use the, use the fingers in my hand. Start with zero. The first number is zero. One, two, three, four. So, actually, if you count with zero, one, two, three, four, you have five fingers, so it only counts to four. So that's why <laughs> that's why you have five under five and not equal to five. So otherwise it will be zero, one, two, three, four, five, and it will be six. Uh, so your computers really it's really useful to start counting with zero. You'll see this property later when we're using the JSON uh, for uh, accessing array. So don't fight it. Don't be like me. I fought this for a long time. Just start counting with zero and it's easier. So the number zero, start counting with number zero. The first one is zero, one, two, three, four, and the five, it's already out. And you do it, whenever you do it, change this number plus one. The number i, whenever you do once, so the code will run, draw a Lego head, run again, draw a Lego head, run again, draw a Lego head three times, run again, draw a Lego head four times, run again, Draw Lego five times and stop because the next will be six. Whenever you do this, the i will be equals to i plus one. So you start with one. So is the, sorry, you start with the, the, the number zero and then you draw Lego head and you add one to the i and then it's one and then it's two and then it's three and then it's four and it's five doesn't do again. So it goes like this like this, like this five times, and then it continues to run something again. Okay, so this code gets stuck in a loop and gets drawn five times, and then it goes after the loop. So what this does, it's, it's drawing the Lego head five times, but we only see it once. What's the problem here? The problem here is that we're doing the lego head always in the same position but we can actually change the position according to the number of times we draw it so for example i want to draw it five times to the right so guess what the lego head has 100 uh, the size is 100 so i'm i'm, I'm going to move it 150 to the right so i'm going to move it plus 150 times i. Why, why am I doing this? Because I'm doing this because whenever I draw the Lego head, I draw it on 100. And if you multiply the number, the first number, 0, times 150, it's 100 plus 0. But the second time it runs, it's 100 plus 1 time times 150. So it's 100 plus 150. So it gets moved to the right. So the second time, it's 300 plus 100. So it's starting to move slightly to the right. And we get our Lego heads moving to the right. So these Lego heads are quickly going out of the screen. We could increase the, we could increase the, uh, we could increase the size of the screen. Or remember, we have scaled the drawing. We have to scale the drawing um, here. So you can actually say, you can, we scale it, okay. And you can actually scale times 0 0.5 times i. So you can actually scale everything according to our drawing. So we're using variables 
and changing the aspect of our drawing. So I'm just plugging the same numbers into the positions of the things, if this makes sense to any of you. Of course, I could have said this was a variable. So if I, I can say this, let temp scale equals to 0 0.5. And I would just say here, copy for me not to make mistakes like this. This would be okay. Yeah. Or actually, we can make this grow. Uh, let's make this grow times i. And just just grows over time. You see? So I'm just using the number i, if my computer responds in the next minute or so. I'm just using the number i, the iterator, that goes 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and plugging it to the same drawing we did, static. But as I'm using variables to say position and scale, as the number i changes, also changes the position to the right or to the left, and the scale more or less. You can actually divide it also, and it goes smaller. So you can actually play with this, and just go smaller, okay? Uh, but right now, not really useful. So I'm just maintaining this like this, in order to maintain time, you, Rodrigo, Rodrigo is also already stressing because I, I'm already uh, going over time. Guys, so I did once the same drawing to the right. I can change the size. I can change the position. I can change the scale. I can change eventually the color. We can change the color if you want to with a, with a letter I or with a, a random thing. I, I didn't talk about the random. We'll talk about it later. But the, the last thing I want to talk about is a nested loop. So we did one, two, three, four, five to the right. And now I want to produce a grid. The concept of grid is very important when you do when you want to do Cartesian maps. So you want to distribute things horizontally and vertically. So as I did something like here, one, two, three, four, five, I can actually do again. Now, this five, I can do again, five lower five lower. So I just do one group, one, two, three, four, five, and this five, one, two, three, four, five again, one, two, three, four, five again. So what I'm going to do is called a nested loop. So I just go see, just, I forgot to fall in Portuguese English. I'm just mixing Portuguese English. Repeat heads to the right. Okay. But as I'm repeating to the right, I can move them and repeat them again to the right. So Let's do it whenever you draw, repeat whatever number, how many, how many, how many, us? Uh, say screw English. In columns, in uh, any number, of rows. So I have a I have a one, two, three, four, five columns of heads. I want to repeat these columns in three, four, five, six, ten rows. So what I'm gonna do is this for loop is gonna be nested inside another loop. So I'm gonna say four. Guess what? I'm just gonna repeat this first one inside another one. This might be confusing. But this might be the place where the tidy code comes in handy. Uh, it's not, okay, I'll not research copy. I'm just gonna put this to the right. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna repeat one, two, three, four vertically. And each time I do one, two, three, four, I'm gonna one, two, three, four, five. 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 Okay, so this will be, let, I'm just gonna use another variable called K in order not to repeat the same, otherwise it will mix the variables. Let k equals zero, k under four or, or three to be a different number. k equals k plus one, or it's the same thing as saying k plus equals one, or as you'll see a number of times online, this is so common, so common that people shorten, shorten this to k plus plus. This is exactly the same thing as this, okay? 
So whenever you draw the Lego head to the right, I'm going to draw the Lego head times a hundred times k downwards. Uh, sorry, sorry, plus. Okay, so whenever you change this number two times downwards, five times, I'm, I can actually scale it also. Okay, go physics key. Okay, so you can actually say five times, two times. And you see the looped Lego head. And just in order to comply with time, I know I'm missing the variables and I'm missing the import media files as the text um, from the program, but we, there's still time to go over them in the next session. Uh, in order to produce this uh, responsibly. So for today, uh, in order to keep time, that's already past my hour. Eu não sei, Bruno, isso para mim é um recorde. Só passar seis minutos, sete minutos do tempo, eu nunca, eu nunca compro horários, ok? Eu demoro sempre mais tempo do que eu jogo. Não, não, isso... oh, Pedro, deixa só fazer aqui um ponto de situação com, com o Rodrigo. Eu, por mim, está controlado. Não sei, Rodrigo, o que é que tens previsto? Não, eu, isto para mim, se, se praticarem isto, da, da próxima, de, de hoje para a próxima sessão, isto é... Isto já foram muitos conceitos, portanto eu preciso, uhum. é preciso mesmo necessário parar e, e, e perceber este código. Eu posso tentar comentar o, o que está aqui a faltar, acho que está mais ou menos indicado com o help, mas estes conceitos são fundamentais. Este, este desenhar, desenhar com trocar a posição da matriz, portanto nós vamos desenhar bolas diferentes, formas diferentes na posição do gráfico, e vamos transformar a matriz sempre que desenhamos. E, portanto, isto para mim é fundamental ficar assente. E, o que vem a seguir pode ser feito mais ou menos de forma rápida, mas temos que nos concentrar no, no, na matéria. Mas posso, podemos, para mim, podemos ficar por aqui hoje. Podem encaminhar pelo chat os links dos projetos que fez hoje. Sim, na realidade está aqui, mas posso mandar outra vez. Mas isto era mais para, para cumprir o tempo, está bem, Bruno? Porque eu sei que vocês também querem, querem falar. Sim, sim. sim. Uh... Uh, eu também... Uh, I, I, will, uh, uh, I will share the, the video that we are uh, recorded, recording. So, in order to also all of you uh, follow up step by step until the next session. I think that could help as well. Sim. Vou só por aqui. O, o código foi feito, está aqui comentado. The code that was made um, in, during the section, the, this, this first session, is pre, uh, has the, the PCD IVP5 um, prefix. And I will add uh, from today until next Wednesday, I will add the this is what is expected. It's still uncommented. I will comment this out. This is what is expected for us to do. We'll do less than this, okay? We'll do less than this um, because this is kind of complex. We'll do just one slider because this is actually changing things. Um, and there's a bug somewhere over here. <laughs> uh, we'll do less than this, but we'll use everything um, that, that's in this code. So. What will be what will have what we have been doing today is preparing this matrix structure, like you're seeing here. So we're preparing the way to loop through all the data. And the next, uh, then in the next session, we'll put text and learn how to read the points and place them in specific points of the data. So, of course, I'm doing dots, but you can we can do mouths, Legos, uh, <laughs> monsters. I don't know. Uh, and I'll 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 add the the, the I'll add the um, I'll add the these ones are more or less organized by topics. I'll add some more here. We're still missing the conditions, as you see. Some of the examples have the same, not exactly the same thing because this was a previous workshop that used the, a similar logic. 
but the concept is over there and these are already commented so if you want to study this this stuff the link that you received in the event rights and the link that's here on the chat it's this link and we're just missing one file that should be over here should be the number four and i forgot yeah it's this one number four yes yeah i just now i don't know what i'm doing uh, just do it here at the collection yeah this one it should be the number four uh, hmm. should it be the number four no i'm okay i'll correct this and now this later and I'll, and I'll check the, if it's uh, everything is commented so you can you can see um uh Ruth, tá, tá, tá a perguntar aqui e se nas referências vamos encontrar informação sobre as variáveis, porque confesso que me perdi um bocado a partir oh, oh. Estava tudo aí muito eu, eu vou eu vou eu vou partilhar eu vou partilhar o vídeo para, para além do vídeo agora falando uhum. pronto, uh, mas eu acho que depois podemos partilhar com todos uh, faz todo sentido partilhar com todos agora falando da pós-graduação eu vou partilhar não só o vídeo uh, como também uh, 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 estas páginas que o Pedro foi gravando, eu neste momento tenho aqui os links no fundo. Sim, nós a partir de, de, do link que o professor Pedro colocou das coleções, conseguimos ir às coleções de tudo que estava a mostrar e depois sim. conseguimos ir a este clichê em específico, não é? Sim, é. sim. Então, Além disso, pronto, okay. podemos ir, uh, também vou partilhar especificamente o, o ficheiro relativo às funções okay. e, a, e às variáveis. Ok, pronto, acho é? que foi perdido. E vou, vou pôr no, no Teams, pronto, okay, já, no módulo, já no módulo... Uhum. Sim, assim ficamos todos com acesso, ok, obrigado. O IEX, está bem, mas depois Sim. faz sentido é partilhar com, toda, com todos os que fazem parte do workshop. Ok, eu começo a próxima sessão por variáveis, faço um pequeno bloco de desenho para variáveis, só para relembrar, porque realmente foi muito rápido, e pronto, esta coisa de tentar fazer as coisas em duas horas, às vezes é um bocado exigente demais, e eu... Enfim, peço desculpa. Não, 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 está perfeito, Pedro. A variável é, de facto, um conceito fundamental na computação. Pronto, é, é... Eu, queria, eu queria chegar ao desenho <risos> o mais rápido possível e pronto, quando tinha os pés pelas mãos, peço desculpa. Não, não, tá, foi, foi perfeito para o, para o tempo que tivemos. Um, pronto, uh, quarta-feira continuamos, não é? Uh, uh, não sei, uh, agora, agora refiro-me só <risos> aos alunos do IEX. Uh, Rodrigo, Sim, eu vou abrir uma sessão no Teams, nos, nos vemos lá em 5 minutos, pessoal, só para vocês também fazerem um bio break. Ok, para quem não é da sessão, obrigado por terem estado presentes. Thank you all for being present. I hope to see you all in, in Wednesday uh, and on Thursday um, for, the, for the, the continuation of this. So we'll recap the variables, so how to use variables in different modes. Although we'll just need numeric modes for this for this workshop, and go through the text. I believe it was the um, the thing that was missing from the Eventbrite uh, program uh, that was planned, and uh, we'll break down. So we'll start a new sketch. So study this sketch: how to draw, how to draw functions with properties, with colors, and uh, you might want to see the the matrix and so on because we'll be using those concepts, you know, getting data and drawing your data, okay? So right now we're using data ourselves, but we will fetch the data from external source and use this data to plug in to our drawing. Yes. Okay, portanto, espero para vos a todos. I hope cool. to see you all on Wednesday. Until then, do some practice. Send us some drawings if you want to send us some monsters, some Legos. Usually I do this in class and I, I, Rodrigo also does this. We, we drew, I usually encourage people to draw robots or Legos, so, because it's easy. Uh, so if you want to send us some drawing, it will be cool to just to do some print screens and show them in the conference. So if you want to send them, I'll, we'll be proud to show your, your creations until then. Yes. Obrigado, yes. Pedro. Até quarta. Obrigado, The, the link Obrigado. will be the same, okay? Yeah. When is that? Obrigado. Um abraço. Até já. Boa noite, todos.